Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I must be mad, but I'm going to be trying out my new glasses today on a Roggen puzzle. Um, now, I don't know why, but these puzzles um, featuring Roggen rule sets seem to be some of our most popular videos, um, but they are always incredibly, incredible, st incredibly stressful to try and solve. Um, and the original Everything is Roggen puzzle was by a setter called Demono. And this puzzle is Demono's follow up to that, um, that original nightmare. <laughs> this one is called Different but Still Roggen. And I've read the rules and they are mental. So basically, we just throw out of the window everything we thought we knew about Sudoku because we have to actually deliberately disapply it in trying to solve this. This could be a long one, folks, um, so <laughs> strap yourselves in. Um, but before I read you those long and incredibly awkward rules, let me think about some other things I have to tell you about. Um, over on Patreon, we've got vignettes for you, which is, um, um, well, actually, we haven't got it yet, but it will be, Im it's imminent. Um, Mark and I solved vignettes, which is a puzzle by Zetamath. If you want to try that puzzle, do try it. We put a link to it under this video in the video description. Um, and it's a sort of it's a six by it's, it's six six by six grids connected by the notion of doublers. Very interesting. It took Mark and I a long time collaboratively solving it, um, but you seem to enjoy our collaborative solve of Jabberwocky. So we thought we'd do another one. Um, and that's uh, that's over on Patreon imminently, as is going to be at the start of October. The incredible duality punt, uh, duality punt, no duality hunt by um, the Sudoku Skunk Works. 14 puzzles there. Now what we've decided to do is there's going to be a little, um, uh, we're, we're going to have the competition running over the first four puzzles. So if you get the first four puzzles done of the 14, you'll be in with the chance of winning the competition. You just send us what you need to for that. Uh, if you get all 14 done, um, then there'll be a shout out on the channel for anyone and everyone who manages to do that over the coming few weeks. So something to aim for for our very expert solvers out there. I think even the, even the very expert solvers will have to um, put their thinking caps on to get through all 14 puzzles. So we're looking forward to seeing how you all get on in that competition. Um, now, what else? I've got I've got quite a few birthdays today, actually. Let me read those out. So Esmeralda, it's your birthday. And I know this because your friend Anne-Marie wrote to us over there in the Netherlands. She's very sorry she can't be with you today. I think she lives a couple of hours away, um, but she hopes you have a brilliant day with lots of cake. Um, and Marijn, from, from your sister uh, Imoa, also in the Netherlands. I think Marijn's just begun his PhD uh, and she misses you, which is rather lovely. I think you've just you've just moved into an apartment to start your studies. So, Marijn, I hope you have a, a great day too. Um, 23 years old. Gosh, that feels a long time ago. Um, now, Michael, your friend Stephen down in South Australia um, suggested that you'd like a shout out for your birthday. And um, Stephen wanted to let you know, Michael, that he's very, very grateful for all the support you've given him over the last year. Um, and then Sam, you have turned a quarter of a century today um, and you're wa rather worried about that. Well, let me tell you, you've got a lot of worry to come if you're worried about only turning 25. Um, um, but you'd like us to shout out uh, all our LGBT plus um, viewers out there, which we're very happy to do. And um, well, I hope obviously your day is full of immense amounts of chocolate cake. So there you go. Lots of birthdays on the 28th of September. And um, and I've got no more excuses. <laughs> I'm going to have to read you the rules of different but still Roggen. Right. Get ready because this is mad. Right. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Yay. A sarcastic yay, I think, from Demono there with an exclamation mark. Uh, digits along a purple line, oh no, digits along a purple or red line must all must all repeat and may not be chosen from consecutive digits. And then it says, i.e. 445577 is valid, but 445566 is not because I guess 4, 5 and 6 are consecutive. So I think what's happened here is somebody has put this in with red uh, crossing the purple 
to uh, delineate the fact that otherwise, if, if, there, if, there, if these weren't in different colours, you wouldn't quite know in which direction the Remban twisted, if you see what I mean, or you might not know anyway. So I think that's probably why this has been done in different colours. And on a normal Remban line, imagine that was a normal Remban line, um, we'd normally say that contains a set of consecutive digits in any order, non-repeating. Here, we have to repeat them, and we have to make sure that whatever we put on the line is not consecutive. So we totally break the rules of Renban. Um, now, next, digits along a grey palindrome line must not read the same in both directions. So where have we got? We've got one here. We've only got one of these by the looks of things. So, I mean, this is the most useless clue, isn't it? It's the most useless clue because normally on a palindrome line, we could look at those two cells and say, well, they have to be the same digit. Here, all we are being told, literally, all we're being told by this line is that those two digits are not the same. That is not a prolific amount of information. Um, Digits along a thermometer must not increase from the bulb end. We've got, I mean, these are basically inequalities, aren't they? So all we're being told here is that if that is a four, that cell must not be greater than four. So it have to be three, two, or one, which also seems remarkably sparse. Um, now we're nowhere near through the, through the rules yet. So let me continue. Digits along the negative diagonal marked in blue must all repeat. Ah, okay. So we've got to have repeated digits along this diagonal. Um, normally, of course, the rule would be they'd all have to be different, but now we have to make them all repeat. Diagonals indicated by arrows outside the grid must not sum to the indicated value. I mean, again, just the most useless clue. So all we're being told here is that those three cells don't add up to 18. Those three cells don't add up to 19. I honestly think that when these setters make these puzzles and we try and solve them in videos, it just must be, they must just laugh themselves silly. Um, now, where are more rules? Um, not some. Clues outside the grid must not be valid X sum or skyscraper clues as defined below. In a valid X sum clue, the first X digits seen by the clue where X is the first seen digit sum to the number in the clue, i.e. 382 XXXXXXX would be a 13 clue. OK, let me explain this. So if you had a valid X sum clue outside the grid here, what it's saying is look at the first digit. And in this example, it seems to be a three. So let's put three, eight and two in there. So this three is telling you to, to add up the first three digits in this direction. Well, three, eight and two add up to 13. So if this was a valid X sum clue, this this would have 13 written outside the grid there. But in this puzzle, We've got to make sure that all of these clues outside the grid are Roggen. So they mustn't be valid X sums clues or skyscraper clues. And then says in a valid skyscraper clue, consider the digits as heights of buildings where taller hut buildings hide smaller buildings behind them. The clue outside the grid indicates how many buildings can be seen from the direction of the clue. Um, and then it's got an example. So let's do the example down here. So it's got four, hang on, four, six, two, one, eight, seven, five, nine, three. So from this direction, if you imagine this was a building of size four, this would be a building of size six. So from this direction, you would see the four, you would see the six, but you wouldn't see the two because the six would hide it. You wouldn't see the one because the six would hide it. You would then see the eight because the eight would tower over the six. So, and you would see the nine. So actually this, this if this was a correct skyscraper clue, there would be a four written at the top of the grid. But we also have to consider what there would be from the bottom of the grid if this was the clue. And this would see a three and then the nine, which would obscure everything behind it. So this would be a two clue at the bottom of the grid from the other direction. So, well, I mean, hopefully you can see immediately this 10 clue. If we viewed that as a skyscraper, it could never be correct. So it's actually giving us no information at all in terms of a skyscraper. It is giving us information about X sums because it's saying that, um, let's say this was a three and this was a one, 
then if this was a correct x sums clue, this would be a 6. 3 plus 1 plus 6 does equal 10. So it would be telling us that this digit is not a 6. I mean, it's just nothing. It's just nothing. Um, so do have a go. The way to play is click link under the video. I will tell you that Demono, uh, he DM'd me on Discord and said that uh, his view was this would take 45 minutes to solve. Mark tested it. It took him about two and a half hours. So this is not an easy puzzle. And, um, and 45 minutes seems a little on the um, on the short side. Uh, but and I can tell you as well, I looked on Logic Masters Germany. It's achieved in many months, 18 solves only. And it's got five stars out of five for difficulty. It's also got a perfect 100% rating. So the people who have solved it have loved it, which doesn't surprise me. Demono is a brilliant setter. But just be warned, this could be a popcorn edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Anyway, I can't remember if I said click the link under the video to play it, but you know the score. Anyway, now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, I think the bobbins count today is going to be rather large. So let me think about this. I'm, I'm sort of in my mind, I'm instantly dismissing all of the outside clues. I cannot see how these are relevant. I mean, at least not now, knowing those two squares don't add to 10. Knowing this can't be, I mean, I, I can see, okay, I can see one thing about a one clue outside the grid. That's telling us that this cell cannot be a one, because if it was a one, it would be a valid X sums clue, because it would be saying, okay, let's sum the first one digits from this direction, and there would only be one digit, and it would be summing the number one does give you the answer of one, which would correct this clue. So that can't be a one. And in fact, now that occurs to me, I can see it can't be a nine either, because if it was a nine, it would correct the count of the skyscrapers clue, because then there would only be one building seen from this direction. Right. OK, so every time you have a one at the border, though there aren't enough ones here. OK, it still isn't relevant, because now all we're, all we're being told is that those cells I've just highlighted are not ones and they're not nines. Now that would have been brilliant if we could have got seven of them in a column, because then we could have got, we'd have known there was a one nine pair in the other two cells. No, I mean, a two, two can never be a valid X sums clue. So the twos are only relevant for skyscrapers. The reason two can't be a valid X sums clue is how can you, you can't, if you put two there, it's saying sum the first two cells and you can't put zero in there. So, you know, you're always going to get to a number greater than two if you put a two in the first digit. And if you don't put a two in the first digit, you can never make them sum to two because even if you put one there, well, it doesn't work, does it? It just doesn't work. It doesn't work however you do it. So two, two is here to prevent a skyscraper clue being valid in the row or column that the two is applying to. So, I mean, you know, it's doing silly things like it's preventing this cell from being a nine, because if that's a nine, it would force this to be a correct skyscraper clue. But again, that's, oh, so is it nines in this box? Hang on, let me just think about that. So you can't put nine there, there or there. Or there, because it would be correct at the end of a thermo. No, okay. <laughs> so the, the congregation of the 212 clues allow us to pinpoint the nine into a P pentomino in, um, in box one. And no matter how much onomatopoeia we do, um, or alliteration, it's not going to really help us. Right, okay. Um, so it's not, so it's something, right, it must be the Ren bands then, mustn't it? The palindrome is useless, the thermos are useless. Well, okay, the thermos are saying you can't put ones on the bulb again. So one, 
No, it's just not. It's just not enough. Can't put nines on the tips. No. Right, so somehow this puzzle is solvable by reference to the purple lines, which, and let's just check the rule on the purple lines and the red lines, obviously. Um, we, oh, we must, oh, right, okay. So we must repeat digits, right. So a three cell Remban line is interesting because that's telling us those three digits are all the same. And that's because, let's just think about this digit. We know this must repeat on the line. Well, once I repeat it once, if this digit was another digit, a different digit from this one, it would need to repeat and it wouldn't have any space to. So all three of those are the same. And that's going to be the same for all. Oh, this is massive. OK, right. OK, I can actually see how this is important because now all of a sudden this um, hashtag thing here is big because Well, these, these have all got to be different digits. These have all got to be different digits. I'm just, these can all be different digits, can't they? Or have I misunderstood the rules? No, I think they, yeah, I think they can. For some reason that's, that's offending me visually as my glasses, you know. Um, so, okay. So those three digits are all different. Yes, okay, and, and these three digits here, I'll make those green, um, they definitely have to be different digits from yellow and indeed blue because green and yellow see each other in box five. Now, yeah, this is where it's going to get tricky though because that sequence of digits oh no it does see blue of course it sees blue in the column doesn't it right so um, those three digits are also not blue they're not green and they're not yellow because green and yellow see that cell so those are some new digits they can be um, hmm, what color shall I choose orange yeah okay um, now those digits yeah okay this is still okay this is still okay this is another new color because i oh, mate oh i don't know whether to use red <laughs> i'll use purple on the red line um although this is already getting a little bit difficult isn't it maybe i'll use gray um I don't know what to use actually. I'll stick with purple. Um, although I don't really like the look of this actually. I think I'm going to change that one. That was a bit light coloured for me, for my liking. I'm going to make it darker. I'll make it grey. Oh, or darker grey. It's a bit, it's, it looks a bit funny on the palindrome line now. Oh, that's better. I can definitely see that. Right. Okay. So let, I'm just going to check this purple line. This purple line, it definitely sees yellow and green and it sees blue. So this is a, a fifth digit. We've got one digit here and then we've got one digit for each line on the hashtag. Now, those three digits there Oh, that's a shame. That's really, really a shame, actually. I was about to say these are a new digit, but they they could be the black digit, I think. Do those cells there, let me just highlight them. Do they see these black cells somehow? This digit, it almost does, but I don't think it quite does. Hmm. OK, so I can't. Well, I mean, what we can do, although I don't really know how to pencil mark it, is clearly not blue. It's clearly not anything that appears in box five. But that still does leave it the opportunity to be black. What about that one? Is that see that one's better? This is another color because this sees all of the hashtag cells and it sees blue in box five. So that is that is a new color. Uh, I'll make that orange. It's this one. So at the moment, now I've got six colours identified and possibly a seventh. Hmm. 
But these these ren bands are a little well actually they're length four ren bands as well aren't they so what's going on with those i've got to repeat a digit oh yeah okay so these these can't have four of the same digit on them because they would repeat so these must have two digits that repeat uh, yeah okay so that digit is the same as that digit now, do I want to waste a color on that? Because the problem with that is that this color could absolutely be the same as that could be the same as yellow or black, I think. I don't think either of those cells see yellow or black. So what I might do is go to the I'll, make, I'll label these A and those are the same digit. Now, by that token, those two digits are the same, so they can be B. Now, can I do the same on this little wiggly line? We can say that there must be repeated digits again. Those two can't repeat. Um, right. So this one here. It can't be the same as that and it can't be the same as that so it must be the same as that so those are the same now that that is good actually because this sees a and b so that is genuinely another digit and then these two digits have to be the same and d sees a b and c so this right so there is a, there's a sort of there are four different digits only in all of those cells there and they're in a very specific pattern. Actually, I could label all those up with um, with E, <laughs> just to make it very clear. They're all the same. Now, are they different from A, B, C, and D? That's a good question. Yes, because E sees A, B, C, and D here. So actually, there's a whole whole conglomeration up here or congregation is probably a better, more accurate word. There's a congregation of um, of five different digits in a very specific pattern. So all we need to do somehow is to tie this five cell arrangement or five digit arrangement here up to the colors and we'll be cooking with gas. And I've not looked at this enormous line yet. Um, Oh, and actually, I'm just thinking about what was the other rule? We're not allowed. We mustn't choose consecutive digits. So actually, we know A and B are not consecutive and neither are C and D. But the actual that non consecutive rule doesn't apply to any of the three cell lines because they all have the same digit on them. Oh, ah, whoa. Ah, this is massive. Right, okay, I should have started here, I think, on this line, because those digits all have to be different. They're in the same box of the Sudoku. And yet, on, on a purple line, we have to have repeats of all of these digits, and there are only exactly enough cells for the repeats to happen. So, I'm wondering here, I'm actually wondering if I can lock in all nine different digits now because hang on, hang on. I've got four different colors on the hashtag. I've got five different colors here and these five colors certainly see yellow, black and green. Now, do they all see purple or not? They do actually, they do. These, these don't see purple in the box. For example, this cell doesn't see purple or in and of itself. However, remember it must repeat on, on the Remban line and it, it's either gonna repeat there or there. And those two cells therefore are definitely gonna see wherever this purple digit repeats outside box seven. So actually, this 
arrangement of in, in the bottom left of the hashtag and the long line specifies or identifies all nine different digits which means I should be able but I know that blue is not in the hashtag so blue has to be one of these digits and the same is true of orange right okay so where does that digit in the corner repeat on this line given it must repeat where does it repeat well it can't repeat in its own row and it can't column and it can't repeat in its own row so it repeats there those two digits are the same and that is a new color now that color could be orange couldn't it it can't be blue in fact maybe maybe what we have to do here right okay i'm going to get rid of those colors and i'm going to change them can i actually label these up now yes yes that digit here sees a b c d e so it is a a sixth digit in the top right and what can we do the same here this digit do i get to see? yes that one sees a so it can't be a that one sees B, these see C, D is seen here, E is seen everywhere, and F is seen there. So that's another digit. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So these are six different digits in the top right, but in the bottom left, we've got nine different colors. And somehow we need to tie these together. But that frees up colors for me. So I'm going to make that blue. And given it has to repeat on the line, that has to go there. And this is definitely different to all of these colors. Now. Bother. Okay, so now this is going to get complicated. Because... Where does those digits go on this line? And I know I know which domino they go in. These digits can't repeat there. And they're not blue, so they don't go there. So they go there. But how on earth do you differentiate between them? Answers on a postcard, please, because I don't know how to do that. Um... I'll make those orange okay and then these these two have to go there don't they which makes them have to be red i suppose and really what i'd like to do is to differentiate these somehow because unless i differentiate them i haven't really identified all my colors Um, and how exactly is this helping me solve the puzzle? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay, let's try that. Where does that digit go in this box? I think it's got to go there because of this funny grey line, but I'm not 100% certain. Let me think about this. So, it clearly just doesn't go there. It's clearly different from orange. It can't be, it's not the same as yellow, black or green, which a green hasn't appeared up there either. Can't go here. It's not the same as blue. This digit can't be purple. So, yeah, it, it is. I mean, it's, it's what we found before. These digits cannot overlap with these colors. So it does have to form. It does have to go into a white cell and it can't go into this one. So it does. We do seem to be being told that that digit and that digit are the same. But I've got to I differentiate this digit. From. from that digit so this needs to have a flash i think let's give it a flash those digits are the same now we'll make this one a dark flash red digit and then okay so that that goes here then does it 
I don't see where else it can go. It must go in a white square because it sees every other colour in the hashtag or the, or the arrangement here. So it's got to go there, which means green goes here. And now what's that digit? That should be known now. Purple. There's no purple in this box, so that's purple. <laughs> I think we're making progress of a sort. Um, now what do we do? I'd love to know. There must. I bet there's a way now of knowing what F is. Um, let's have a think about that because this F does see a lot of colour. So this F here sees, it sees, does it see red? Oh, it's so annoying. It, it, oh no, it does. It does see, it see, because those are reds, it sees both flavours of reds. So actually it's not red. Okay, that's good. What about yellow? It sees yellow. Blue. Yes, that one sees blue, so it's not blue. Orange. Oh, bobbins. Right. It sees this orange. It doesn't see that one. It's pr that means it probably is this one, I think, because I think it's difficult for it to be much, this. Pur purple it sees in a column. Green it sees in the box. Black it sees very easily. And they're all the colours. So we know that F is this flavour of orange. So we're going to have to differentiate our oranges now, which I'm very happy to do. So F is now orange light coloured. Now, does that mean I'm going to be able to do exactly the same now to G? Um, <laughs> that made me look, think about scrambled eggs for some reason. Um, let me think. Okay, let, well, let's do the same exercise again. So can it be red? Oh, I bet you it is. I bet you it's red. Because I just feel it's sort of rotationally a bit symmetrical to the fact that this ended up being orange. Um, ah, no, it's not red. It's not red, I don't think. Because that one sees dark red and that one sees light red. So it's not red. Oh, OK. I was totally wrong. Yellow it sees. Blue. Oh, it doesn't see blue, I don't think. Maybe it's blue. Orange. It does see both flavours of orange. So it's not orange. Does it? See, yes, it sees purple. Does it see green? Yes. Does it see black? Yes, it easily does. Right. So it's actually blue. OK, that's a shock. That's giving us a lot of blues in the. Can I get the blue by? No. Yes. Where does the blue by Sudoku go in this box? There, apparently. I don't know whether to label the blues with G's now. I sort of want to, but maybe it's going to make the puzzle a bit strange. Stranger. Um, so, OK. Am I right in saying then... Famous last. Well, there's got to be a blue in one of those. How could that be blue? And let me let me tell you what I'm thinking there about this being blue. If this is blue, it's on this diagonal where we're told we have to repeat it. Where do I repeat this if this is blue? I can't repeat it in its box. That's just silly. So I've got to repeat it there or there, where it will clash with that one or this one. So that is not blue, that's blue. And now that one must be something else, which is red. That's red and a black flash. It feels, that felt, felt true, didn't it? I hope it, I hope I've not misunderstood the logic. Right, so what are those digits then? Oh, ah. Those double double orange have to go there, look. So these are orange, but we don't know what flavoured orange they are. This is going to get crazy. Well, that digit should be known. Yellow. That's a yellow digit. I've not put yellow in this box. 
So now one of these is yellow. Can I now get E? E was E was difficult before, wasn't it? But maybe now, maybe now we can hone in on the color of E. So E, can it be red? No, because these two digits see both flavors of red between them. Can it be yellow? No, because of box five. Can it be blue? No. Can it be, uh, I keep going back to the, the color pad on the right of the screen just to make sure I'm going through the colors one by one. Um, it's seeing both flavors of orange, so it's not orange. I hope it can be something. Purple? No, can't be, oh dear. Can't be purple, can it be, it can't be green. So it's got to be black. I think that's the only color I've got left. Now, does it see, it doesn't actually see those black cells. Well, that's good because that suggests that's right. So this is a whole sequence of black digits. Actually, it might be quite useful to keep these labels here because now when I know I'm looking, when I'm looking at A, B, C, and D and trying to guess what they are, I can immediately rule out their E, F, or G because I've already done the thinking around that. Oh, this, I know what this is going to be. Oh, I could nearly do it. I can't quite do it. Right. What are those digits? And here's a thought. Oh no, what I was about to say is wrong. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's tr it's true in a sense, but it's not as true as powerfully as I was going to make it out to be. Clearly, whatever these are, they all have to repeat on the diagonal. So I was about to say, doesn't that mean that there has to be a copy of these three digits? Don't I have to have three repeats? But I'm not sure that's true, actually. So what I was thinking is, whatever they are, do they have to be mirrored there and mirrored there? Or can I do it some other way? So if that digit was the same as that digit. No, it's, it's OK, isn't it? I could have I could have one of these repeating in here and in here, and then the other two repeating just once in one of these boxes. And I think that works. But any, anyway, anyway, whatever is in these three cells definitely has to make another appearance on the diagonal. So we need to identify these colors. And what are they then? So we've got the other color of orange, which must be in one of those two cells. I don't really know how to how to pencil mark that though if I'm honest because I can't use the gray flash because I've actually used the gray flash to identify a specific type of orange so there but there is an orange uh, is there oh there's both flavors of red as well oh dear okay There's both, I need to put both flavors of red on this. So does that mean I can tell what's going on there then? Yes, okay, that's quite cute. Um, I've got to put two flavors of red on this diagonal in those three cells. So what would happen if I divided these red domino like that? Well, now I think that cell has to simultaneously, it has to be Schrodinger, it has to be two things at the same time, because the red, the dark red, the red with the dark grey, can't go here or here now, so it has to go there, and the light grey has the same problem, it's got to go there as well. So that would become two cells at the same time. So I need to make sure I don't do that. So that's got to be, I think, this way round. And the problem with this, of course, is it only... It's a bit like the one with the orange. The orange is in one of those two. The, the red dark version is in one of those two. And the, the red light version is in one of those two. And there's literally no way we can tell which of those is correct, I don't think.
Um, right. So what on earth am I meant to do now? Can I get these digits? Look, I've only got two. I know I haven't only got two digits left here at all because that one's not known. So in this row, I've got the second orange in one of these and I've got the other red in one. So I've got dark red in one of those and there's nothing up here that's telling me the nature of that. Okay, we're now, <laughs> it's now getting very complicated. Um, how long have we, 40, how can I have had 40 minutes? I've literally just started the video. I meant to have finished, according to Demono, four minutes from finishing now. And I haven't been that bad, have I? Um, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right. I'm going to try and think about the value of C now. So C is not orange because those two are the, both the oranges. So C is not orange. C, if it's red, it has to be dark red. Now that would make both of those dark red. What's wrong with that? That would make that dark. Oh no, hang on, that doesn't work. Hang on, that, that actually might not work. If, if, what I'm thinking is if this is dark red, I know I've got to put dark red on this diagonal. That can't be dark. It's beautiful. It just rules itself out because, because these two pinch those two cells away. So that's not dark red. So this is not orange and it's not red, which are the, the, the really peculiar colors. And we know it's not, uh, we know it's not E or G. So what is it then? Can it be yellow? No, it can't be yellow. Can it be, no, we know it can't be blue. Hopefully it can be something purple. Purple looks possible. Green? No, it sees green in this row. And it can't be black. I genuinely think that we've just identified that C is purple. I'm sorry, I'm just going to check it because, well, these are the sorts of puzzles where if you make one tiny wrong deduction, you're dead. Um, now, it can't be orange. I'm very sure it can't be red. Can it be yellow? No, it really can't be. Can it be blue? No. Can it be, can, it can be purple? I think it must be purple. Can't be green. Can't be black. Yeah. Okay, so it is purple. Which is it's good and bad. It doesn't really give us anything else, I don't think. But it's still... It's still quite valuable. Okay, so let's try D now. So D looks like it's quite restricted in this row, doesn't it? It sees all sorts of things. So can D be red? Now, if it is red, it's not dark red. It's going to have to be light red. So let's put that in and have a look at that. Does that work or does that break? For, that would put that would make this D. Come on, break your rotten thing. Why is that possible? Ooh, OK, I can't I can't immediately break that. All right, well, maybe that's the only option for D. So D could be red. Can it be yellow? No. Can it be blue? No. Can it be orange? Well, I don't know is the answer to that. It can't be light orange. So could it be dark orange? <laughs> that would make this dark orange. It would make this dark orange. It would make this dark orange because A couldn't be dark orange because it would reflect here and be clashing with the D. So actually it would almost finish the puzzle. It would get two dark oranges on the diagonal, which would be correct. And there would be a dark orange X-wing here and here. 
and that unfortunately I suspect is also possible so so far all we've managed to do is to prove this could be red and it could be orange <laughs> it can't be purple can it be green I don't believe it I think it can be green as well how come this this way round it's so much worse No. All right. I can tell you it's not green, although it's quite complicated to prove this. It's not green because green would go in one of those cells. Um, and then green would have to go there because by Sudoku and green would get reflected by the value of B into this column and there would be two greens in it. So it's not green and it can't be black. So, OK, so this this so D is either red light or orange dark, of course. So this, this horrible pencil mark arises from that. Okay. This is gonna get very tricky to keep track of, isn't it? It really is. I'm wondering if I can prove that that's, if that, if that's green, green is in one of those. If that's green, that's green, that's green. That actually looks quite likely, doesn't it? Um, oh, hang on, hang on. That is actually green by the power of what we've just done to prove green wasn't D. Good grief, I've got a green. So does that disprove what I was just looking at or does it sort of make it even more likely? So if this was green, I was saying this was green. And then that would be green. That would be green. We wouldn't have any greens on the diagonal, which is, of course, essential. Um, but OK, if that's green, do I now know what this is? Of course not, because, because I don't know what any of these actually are. I just know they're from the, the coterie of digits that it's comprised of orange and red. I don't even I don't even want to pencil mark this, to be honest. It's it's literally it's orange or red in either flavor, apart from that flavor and this flavor. But that still means it's got all four colors because it's either yellow, dark or it's red light. Um, Ah, <laughs> okay. Struggling here, aren't I? Um, what a, oh, no, this, this is not, we don't know the order of these. So again, in this row, look, I've got the sort of five, I've got the five primary colors that don't have any flashes available and what I've got to put in is all of the nonsenses. So what's the what's the non not nonsense digit? I've got to put in this one. It is yellow. Can I do that? No. Bar humpak. Um Ah, okay. This column has got reds and yellows in it not reds and yellows, reds and oranges in it. So those have actually got to be sort of normal non-flash colors, don't they? And the normal non-flash colors that I've not put in this column are yellow, purple, and black, actually. So that's not black. Can I get this digit any further reduced? That's not purple. Oh, hang on a moment. I don't really want that on this diagonal. Ooh, oopsie daisy. Because this digit, which is purple, yellow or black, can't repeat on the diagonal in box five, but needs to repeat on the diagonal to obey the rules of this strange puzzle. So there needs to be a black, yellow, black, yellow, or purple digit down here. That can't be black, yellow, or purple. So this digit 
that cut that could be yellow only I think that one could be black or purple so one of these digits has to be that digit which is interesting and if that repeats I've then got I've got three digits here that also have to repeat and are definitely not this. So they so one right, so one of these repeats here and here. And the other two appear once in either this box or this box. And that will get us up to a count of nine. So there's some there's some chicanery going on on this diagonal I think I'm going to label these cells up as well um, these cells are oh no see this is this is madness two of them are from the orange red factory and one of them is green well actually okay so that digit is interesting all of a sudden to me that because that can't be because I need to repeat these digits um, one of them is repeated twice the other two are repeated once on the diagonal I can't introduce any more new colors onto this diagonal there just isn't enough room to repeat them so that can't be green so green is in one of those cells I'm not going to label that because that's going to be mad but this cell this cell is definitely one of those digits which means it's either see again I've got the horrible color problem it's either dark dark orange or light red it's one of those things ah and it is one of those things but I can't I can't detect which okay Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, uh, how can I, how can I make better use of the, of the world now? So there's a green in one of these. Is that somehow helpful? I don't know. What's I've got a bit of yellow in one of these. Just looking at Sudoku. Now, hmm, if I put yellow there, that has to be yellow by the power of anus, and that has to be yellow, which I think would make that purple and this black. Or maybe it's something to do with B, which also has to appear in these three digits. Do we know? I haven't. I don't think I've limited the the power of B yet. So let's think about B and A and see what, whether we can reduce at least the options for those. So B is not orange because it sees both flavor of oranges. So can it be red? Or, well, yes. I'm not even sure I can rule out either of the versions of red from being B. What about yellow? Can't be yellow, can't be blue. It's not orange. Can it be purple? No, it's not purple. I'll keep going. Oh, it can be green. I don't believe it. It can be green. So if it's green, the whole world is going to turn green, isn't it? That's going to be green. That's going to be green. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So it's either green or it's red but it's could I think it could be either flavor of red I don't really I mean I could do that I suppose just to try and you know reflect the fact I've thought about it um, okay let's let's double check a I think I've looked today already I can't remember um, so a 
A is awkward. A is awkward. What can A not be? <laughs> That's a strange sentence. <laughs> um, the B there was a BE version of the word, not that B. Um, so A could be... I think it could be red. I don't see why it can't be. Can it be yellow? Yes, I think. Possibly. <laughs> If, if it is yellow, if it is yellow, that's yellow, that's yellow, that's yellow. So all the yellows would instantly get placed if A is yellow. Um, blue, it can't be. Orange, maybe. I don't, it's not one flavour of orange, but it could be the other. Purple, it can't be. Green, it can't be. Black, it can't be. So it's it's still got too many options, I think, for it to be valuable. Okay, so there must be something else we can do. Maybe it's Sudoku-wise. Let's look at this row where I seem to have seven digits, although I don't really. I've got the five non-contentious digits and these are from red and the naughty digits what about these i've got four of the nice digits so i've got to put one yellow digit along here which i think is fine isn't it oh these are all prime these are all f nice digits because they see the 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 red and they see both lots of nasty digits so they are either red black or purple that's interesting actually that's interesting for the following reason what is this digit because that digit now can't be red. Because remember, oh no, it can be red. No, it can't be red. Why have I got red here when I've got red there? What is this green? Green here. So, so that can't be green actually. So this is purple or black. And that makes sense, doesn't it? That makes sense because that gives this an outlet. Yes, because remember what we've got to do on this diagonal is repeat this digit. Yeah, oh, I see. I understand what I should have done. Right, so the key to this it's very clever. Once I realise these three digits are from yellow, not yellow, orange and red, and they have to repeat on the diagonal, that told us that this digit had to repeat once. But also, once as soon as you realise these, this digit here can't be orange or red, it must be the partner of this digit. It must be. Because everything else on this diagonal needs to be orange and red. So that means this cell is not yellow. But but I still don't know what it is. <laughs> I still don't know what it is. Um That's so peculiar. That's so peculiar. Okay, so this repeats here. Therefore, these, this digit is from orange, red, up or high or low, don't know which. Um, so and one of these is yellow, but I don't know which one. This cell here is not purple by the power. Oh, good grief. Hang on. This cell here is not purple or 
black, that's green. Oh, that's 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 the first thing I've managed to do for ages. So that means this is not green, but also it means this is not green, which means that this is now red. But what flavor of red was it? Or did we not know? We didn't know. I don't think. Bother. No, I don't think we knew. So this is red, which means it's mapping onto one of those digits. Oh, this is clever, though. This is clever. Now I can get green in this column because green now can't go there anymore. So green goes there. Can A be? No, this is beautiful. It's done it. I've done it. Well, when I say done it, I mean that in the most ridiculously um, inexact way. I have all I've done is it got green in this box. That is not really very much. But green, green, green here. So green is in one of these. If green is in A, it goes there and it, it's twice in box two. So that's green. Which seems to mean that's green. Oh, which weirdly means that this is another of these strange cells that's it's it's a red or orange but we don't know what it is it literally could be any flavor of red and orange but now in this row look we've got all of the nasty ones we've got the reds and the oranges so everything else has to be yellow purple yellow purple or something yellow purple what the other color is i'm missing <laughs> Yellow, blue? Yeah, blue. Oh, well, where does blue go in this row then? That's got to go here, I think. So that's got to be yellow or purple. So that's almost really exciting, isn't it? Yeah, this is, this is still going. This is still going because now I've got four blues looking at box two. So that's blue. So I sort of feel like A might be more restricted now than it used to be. It's an amazing puzzle, this as well, because literally it seems to be a colouring puzzle. It, I haven't used the clues outside the grid at all. I'm not even sure how I'm going to use them. Imagine I could colour the whole grid. How is that going to help me? <laughs> um, that is a terrifying... Oh, I know. I know what will happen. Oh, I see. I see what Demono's done. What's going to happen, I think, is we're going to have a coloured grid. But then I'm going to have colours next to the ones. Now, if, if sufficient numbers of these are different, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, there are seven ones. So imagine if all of these what coloured ones around the perimeter were different colours. Well, then none of those digits could be one or nine. And the other two digits would be one and nine. And that would give us a way into the puzzle. So it is colouring. We have to we have to we have to get these coloured uh, cells done, I think. Uh, and that is easier said than done. Believe me. So. What now? What now is the best way of proceeding? These digits have got to be, well, that actually, that digit is red, definitely, isn't it? Because it can't be orange. So that is definitely red, but I don't know its nature. And I know that's red. OK, but that's fine. If I could get this one, then I'd know that one. So one of these is red and one of these is orange. So these are red and orange in the usual con configuration of nonsenses. Yellow is in one of these. So if yellow was there, that wouldn't be yellow. That would be purple, which would make this purple, which would make that purple. Which would sort of be 
potentially interesting. Um, I've got nothing. I've got nothing here. I don't know how to do this. Um, okay, I've got to put yellow in one of these. I've got to put yellow in one of these. A, it feels like A is the digit that I've not figured out, doesn't it? So there must be a way of figuring out or at least restricting what A can be. <laughs> so A, A now, I don't know whether A could have been green before. Let's think about A then. So A, can it be red? It, <laughs> There may be a reason it can't be red, but I don't know what it is. If A is red, it could just map there. That's it's really, it looks, I, th I mean, it probably is red. All right, can it be yellow? That would make this yellow. It would make that cell yellow, and it would make that cell yellow. So it would be very powerful if it was yellow, but unfortunately I think it can be yellow. And I bet you it can't be anything else. Can't be blue. Oh, maybe it can be orange actually. I mean, literally it can be orange as well. So A, A is really indistinct. I don't see how I'm meant to know what A is. I fear there may be a way that we can tell what's going on in this middle box. Now, this, oh, there's a small point I hadn't actually spotted before. This cell here sees both light flavors of orange and red. So that is a dark flavor of orange or red. But I think, unfortunately, it doesn't see another dark flavor. So this is a dark flavor of orange or red, which means that cell is also a dark flavor of orange or red. So this digit here doesn't go in there. It's probably this digit, but how on earth am I meant to actually tell that? It's, it's slightly disconcerting as well that both this domino of orange and this domino of orange are completely unspecified. I, I can't, I mean, what I could do, I suppose, is to just label this up with dark and light you know, to indicate I don't know which way round they go. But I might, what I might do is label, I've got, I have got some cells labeled up as dark red, look. Just in case there's some Sudoku trick here that we can do. Let's just label those cells up for a moment with X's. So yeah, this is the problem. So X, X is in one of those two cells, that's for true, which means X is, but X could be B if that can be X, which I think it can be. So X is in one of these two cells x is in one of these two cells by sudoku that does mean that x is in one of those uh, x can't be there so x is in one of these two cells so have i really increased the, the, the knowledge of the world by locking x into one of these two cells maybe very a very tiny amount All right, let's try the same with um, the other the other 
red digits. So we've got Y's in these two, Y here. And this this way, this this is just drying up now. I don't Y is in one of those two. Can that be Y? Uh, I think it might be able to be. That would make this Y. That's fine, isn't it? So I don't... Um, because this can be Y, can't it? That's the problem. I was about to say Y has to be up there in box three, but I think that's not right, assuming this can be Y. And if this is Y, that's Y. And then that's Y. Good grief. I mean, this is really difficult. This is really difficult. Um... Maybe there is a way of I don't know, maybe there's some Sudoku or something I can do that I've not done. Is that gonna be likely? <laughs> I have no idea. The I've got no idea. Wow. Okay. I have just spotted something. I'm sorry that I've been floundering around here, but I have just spotted something. Those two cells, I know they're the same. <laughs> it's hard to do this with colors, but they can't be black. Because if they're black, where does that go in this box? I don't think any of those can be black. They can't be, look, because you've got these little black cells pinching those, and that seems to have to be green. So actually, we can consider, that's very clever, actually. They have to be purple, which is lovely, because, that, well, lovely, maybe overstating it, but it does mean that this is black. It means this is now, that this is now actually exactly equal to yellow because it can't be black so that is yellow and this therefore is black and now i've got four blacks looking at box three which puts black in the corner which feels like it deserves a song frankly now this cell now has to be purple wow so purple is the digit C now, apparently. How many purples have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have all, we have a surfeit of purple. Um, a quorum. Purple is quorate. Um, and how many, I've got all the black digits as well. So the E's are quorate. Let's get rid of the E's. I want to say... Do I know more about yellow than I used to? Probably not. <laughs> um, that's a really lovely step, actually. It's lovely enough that you can you know that these are a pair on the diagonal, but to then use that to trap or to force the resolution of it is really cute. That's very clever. Um, So, he says, desperately trying to work out what this means. So these, these digits now, we, so we can sort of see the options by Sudoku. It's either this digit, this digit, or this digit. But the unfortunate thing about that is there are a lot of options there. So we need to find a way of disproving these from being something. 
And that seems easier said than done. It really does. Um, let me think. Because we know we know so little about them. That's the problem. It might be something to do with how these have to repeat along this diagonal. Um, but I'll, I'll let me think about that in a moment or two. Yeah, so, yeah, the tricky thing here is I really want to know where yellow is in the world. I know yellow is in one of those. Yellow is in one of these. Yellow is in one of these. And yellow is literally in all three of those, I think. And how am I meant to resolve that? The only way is going to be by somehow. I haven't got, no, see, I was just then wondering if I could do the ones trick that I think is going to be involved in the break in here. Oh, oh, no, that's okay. I thought I had the same color on ones, but I don't. I've got black and yellow here and purple here. But I've still actually got four ones to find before I could even, even think about doing that logic. So... Okay, hmm, this is going to be one of the longest videos we've ever done on the channel, if I can solve it, and I'm far from sure at the moment I'm going to be able to do it. Okay. Right. I do know that A is not equal to X, don't I, because of where the X's are. So A, if it's, if it's a red digit... It's got to be light red. Now, that means it would be equal to, so A would equal Y. That would make this Y. It would mean I'd need a Y on this diagonal. And that would have to go here. And then it would make, that doesn't work. Whoa, I mean, that's really complicated, but it doesn't work. I'm, I'm going to double check this. Okay, so my thinking is A can't be equal to this digit because then, because we've already plotted where X's can go and this would clash. So if A was the other color of red, it has to go there in box one. Now it has to go here in box five. And now it has to go there in box six and it would clash. So so A, A is now, I don't know if it was restricted like this before, but if it was, I didn't spot it. So A now is either orange of some description or it's yellow. Now, in terms of what it can be, if it's orange, it's got to be dark orange. So can it be dark orange? That would make this cell dark orange now. So now we're thinking about oranges. Oh, my phone's going nuts. That's fine. Um, so dark orange. Do I know anything about dark orange? I know dark orange has to make an appearance on this diagonal, but I don't think I'm I think it's in one of those two. Dark orange is in one of those two. Dark orange would be here. That's the only thing we probably sell that we do know is dark orange. Oh, we know those two are orange, don't we? So dark orange is not there. So dark orange would be here. Which would plonk dark orange there. Which would mean that 
do we orient? Oh, dark orange has to repeat on this diagonal as well. Let's remember that. This is complicated. So that would have to be dark orange. And that would be dark orange. And that looks quite likely, doesn't it? So in the end, we would get a perfect pattern, patternage of dark orange in the world. Let me just look at this and see whether or not I believe it's true. It looks good, doesn't it? It looks good in the most annoying way. So, this definitely can be dark orange. Now, the only other thing I think it has the option of being is yellow. So now let's think about that. That would put yellow here. It would put yellow here. It would put yellow here, as well as the other yellows. So we'd have all nine yellows in the grid, and that looks fine as well. I can't see what's wrong with that. So that seems to also be a possibility. So let's put yellow in there as well. But that's a real nightmare because now how on earth do we make progress from this position? That implies that there must be some other way of limiting one of either one of these other REM bands. Perhaps D now is more restricted than it once was. I don't know. I haven't looked at D for a while, so I'm going to I'm going to investigate this again. So D, back in the day when we looked at it last, looks like it could have been red or orange, but probably only one flavour of each. Yeah. If it was red, which is the Y digit, it's going to have to be light coloured. So it would be here, here, here. What's that doing to it? It's now got to appear in these cells, so it's got to be there. It now is repeating on this diagonal. Oh goodness, I've just had a horrible thought. It could be about the fact that I have to repeat one of the digits on this diagonal three times. And there's probably only one way or one configuration that does that. Oh, that would be very, very hard to figure out. That would be it there. And I need to put one in there as well. So if if red, if this is light red, that looks very plausible to me. Now the other option was dark, dark orange, which I think was an option for this. So if I can rule dark orange out of these cells, that would be great because then I think I would know this was yellow. So why is this not dark orange? If it's dark orange, it, that's dark orange then, which means that's dark orange. Hmm. I don't think I don't think I've investigated this line before. This is quite. It's, that's dark orange. That's now got to be dark orange. That's on the diagonal. So we've got the repeat on the diagonal that we need. So we don't have to have it down here. And indeed, we don't seem to be able to have it down here. Um, where does it go in this box? It's got to go there. which I think is fine, isn't it? So it, it ends up being in one of those and in one of these. And that's okay as well. So that's really strange. So it works absolutely fine for this to be dark orange. But it also worked absolutely fine for that to be dark orange. So how else, what, it, what, what else would it be? that would allow us to work this out. I wish I knew, I really do. I wish I could understand. 
wish I could understand quite what's going on. Um, I'm baffled. I'm just baffled. I'm not a baffled king declaring Alleluia. I'm a baffled Simon declaring almost defeat against the mighty Demono. Um, hmm. Don't know where to look. I'm terrified that I'm meant to be looking outside the grid now at these clues. I can't think that's right, is it? These clues tell you nothing. They just don't tell you anything. Weird thing is, if I could identify what colour this was, or indeed what colour this was, almost all the colouring, I think, gets finished as a result of that. Which suggests there must be something about one of these arrangements that is a problem. But what on earth is it? That, I'm afraid, is a mystery. So I've got, I think I've got every digit identified apart from red, orange, of various flavours, and yellow. Now, if that's yellow, that immediately becomes yellow. That takes the position of an X, but X was the digit down here, so that would force, it would force an awful lot of stuff. If that's yellow, that's yellow, that then becomes yellow. Oh, hang on. Hang on, that's it. Right, that's it. Okay, I don't quite understand why I didn't notice this before. But anyway, I didn't. Maybe I didn't look at it this way. But if you look in this box, you can see yellow is in one of these two cells. Now, if we decide to put yellow here, I think that means yellow is there. It doesn't really matter. It's definitely in one. Oh, it is in fact there. But that seems to imply yellow is here. And now in this box, yellow has to go there where it simply can't go because that's on A, which would bounce yellow back there and you get a repeated yellow. Now, the weird thing is, why didn't? So yellow is not there. So yellow is here. I don't know what that does, but what I'm trying to understand is, does that mean yellow's on there? And if, if it does mean that, why when I thought about this being orange, dark, gray, did I not notice the problem? That would be orange, dark, gray. Um, this is orange, orange, dark gray. That becomes orange, dark gray, which means that becomes orange, dark gray. That becomes orange, dark gray. We need to repeat orange, dark gray there. So everything gets resolved, but maybe it may be what I failed to appreciate in this situation is that there's some problem with yellow in this situation. Although it's far from clear now, I can't, I can't see now. In fact, in fact, when I do this, I see that I can still plot all the yellows in the grid. So this is not the problem. So literally I seem to have had to face it from down here. I don't know, I'm, I'm sure I've missed something fairly sim simple here, but anyway, it's good. This is not yellow, so that's yellow. Now that means that digit is something. <laughs> it's some sort of flavor of red or red or orange, isn't it? Do we know which? Of course we don't. It's some something related to that. Now, what does that mean? So this is some sort of flavor of uh, red or orange as well. 
again I think I think it could be light red or any flavor of orange perhaps so the strangest thing about this is it's done nothing actually it hasn't resolved my positions of yellows up here at all it's literally just a digit that sits on its own and sort of goes na 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 which is very unhelpful of it I still don't know which of these is yellow So there must be some other way we can figure this out. Um, I can almost hear you all screaming at your screaming at your televisions or your mobile devices. Why can't he see it? Why is it? Why do his new glasses not work? Um, Has this, has this really improved the world at all for us? I've got some weird collection of stuff on thermometers down here, but these are just inequalities between digits we've not even identified yet. So these are not important. I've got all the G's. I'm going to get rid of those pencil marks there. Have I got, I have not got all the F's. Maybe that's, maybe that's a clue. Maybe I should be looking at light orange and trying to detect something about it. So let's try and plot light orange in the world. Light orange is in one of these two. Light orange is in one of these two. Ah, okay, that's, that's an interesting point. Light orange is in one of these two, but actually it can't be in this one, can it? Because then it would reflect here and be A again. So in fact, light orange is... Is that, actually, is that true? Is light orange there? That could be what we've been missing. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's what we've been missing, but certainly I think that has been suddenly proved to be light orange, which is... I don't know if it matters or not, actually. Um... But it might. So this is now not light orange. Light orange, light orange is not on the die. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So light orange is not on the diagonal in box five. Therefore, it's not on the diagonal at all, which means one of those cells is light orange which means one of these three cells, not this top one, is light orange. One of those two is light orange. Got some seriously complicated pencil marks now. Right, this is not light orange, because then it would reflect onto D, and that would clash with this, which I don't think can be light orange. So light orange is not there. Light orange is placed here in this box, which means I can get rid of that and get rid of that. And now, finally, I actually know which of these original things was light orange. The top one is light orange. So that gets lighted. That gets darkened. Oh, we'll go to colors and do it. So if this is dark orange. Ah, oh, so annoying. Because dark orange is looking at the same cell now. This is dark orange. And there's a dark orange down here. Let's make dark orange G. Um, so there's a G in here, so there's a G in one of those. G has to appear in one of these. No, that's not true. G could be down here, couldn't it? We don't actually know where G is. We do know it's got to be in one of the middle cells. Um, okay, can we... Can I get any further? So I've got F here, I've got F here, I've got F in one of these, F in one of these. Which I suppose must be important somehow, but I don't know how. Uh, 
Okay. Is there some reason why? <laughs> um, so this, oh, I can't even remember what the pencil marks meant now. This is a dark version. No, this was either yellow or dark orange. But how do I know which? I don't want to give up on this because I've done I've, I've done some reasonable solving to get this far. It's just hard to see how to make more progress. Hmm. F is down here. I'd love to know if it's possible to... I'd love to know if it's possible to... Some... I think it's something to do with these A's, B's, D's up here and how these bounce around. Yeah, okay. So whatever D is, we know D is not F. So D is down here. Now, <laughs> I know D is not X. Okay, is that, maybe that's it. Yeah, okay, in this box, X is in one of those cells. It's not D. But D by Sudoku has to go in one of those two cells, just because of its nature. So this couldn't be X, because D is neither F nor... Oh, in fact, if that's F, is that telling me it's not X? Oh, maybe. Maybe that's... This is just... I'm just getting so confused with my pencil marking here. That is, I have labelled that F, which I do know is the light coloured orange, whereas X was the dark coloured red. <laughs> so I think that's not X. Let's go with that. So this is now the dark coloured red. That might matter. It really might matter. So that becomes dark red. That therefore becomes dark red and gets labelled with an X. That's not X anymore, so that's X, which means it loses the monocle of orangeness. Now this seem to ha seems to have to be a... This seems to have to be a red colour from my pencil. Yes, it can't be orange, so that's light. That's red light coloured, which means... And that's on the B cell, so that's red light coloured which means it's not X, because X, we know, is thou that one. So this could be it. This really could be it. So now, what does this mean? Now... Well, now... Where does yellow go in this box now? seems to only have one place left, which would be marvellous, but I'm, I'm just slightly terrified of making a mistake here. This, these are light red, therefore that's light red. Orange. And so this becomes the B digit. B, B, B. B, which is the same as Y, so Y goes around the grid a bit. Therefore it goes here. That's F, that is explicitly F, so that's B. And now B is there, I believe. Whoa, okay, well this is huge. So this is, I, I think I've just got so confused with all my pencil marking and I hope that you can forgive me. I've wasted a lot of your time trying to understand this, but I think finally I'm tracking this down. 
So the question I'm asking is where does B go in this box? And B is light red. So it goes there by Sudoku. Now that seems to mean this cell can't be red anymore. So that has to be dark orange. Now remember we, we labelled up Y as our light red. So we've got all sorts of light reds now. This has to be light red. Um, which seems to mean now G was a dark colour. So the moment we make this red, this has to be G all of a sudden. A dark G as well. So that's not G. Um, but we can keep this going because now this cell has to be light red, which means it's not dark orange. Um, which seems to be imply this now. Yeah, this can't, D cannot be yellow because it sees yellow. So that's got to be yellow, which means that's got to be yellow by Sudoku. And the moment, of course, that becomes yellow, this becomes yellow. And all the yellows, all your yellows are belong to us. And now, D, do I know what D is? I've got no clue. I'm losing, losing my mind here. Yeah, okay, so D is now dark orange by force, which means that's dark orange which goes with this cell, and this cell is now dark orange, which is a G color. So dark orange, dark orange. So there's a dark orange down here, along with, along with something. I don't know what it is, an F. So this, okay, so, oh, so these are not red. These are just not red. These are both flavors. This is, oh, so I've got an FG deadly pattern. Oh, I suppose it might be broken by the thermos or something. Okay, okay, we can believe that, maybe. Um, so this is, this is both flavours of orange, which is an FG pattern. This now can't be orange, so that's red, and it's light red, we know that, which is the same as B. So this is dark red which is therefore not orange or light. So this is our X digit. Now let's just, I just want to check this diagonal because remember, I need to make sure I have repeated a digit. So the purples do repeat. Does that repeat? That repeats once. This X repeats twice, which is, and that repeats once. So that, that does work. That does work. Good grief. Okay, so now, what do we do next? <laughs> well, now I'm now I'm tempted. If I literally, maybe I should correct the pencil marking for my B's actually, because my B I'm now saying is actually a Y. I'm saying my, I can get rid of the A's. I don't need that anymore. I can get rid of the F's. I don't need that anymore. Oh no, I do. I do need F's because F and G. Or do I really? Now I've sort of, I've just got round to a deadly pattern of oranges, haven't I? I don't think I do. I don't think I need the X's anymore because I sort of know what they are. And the Y's, I know what they are. So I think, I think I might as well get rid of all of this pencil marking. The G, yeah, the G is just telling us, or it used to be telling us something about, whoops, um, these digits, these, these digits, these digits. Let's just get rid of everything this way. That's going to be quicker. Okay. So now all I've got to do is somehow figure out how to solve the puzzle from here. So my hypothesis was it was to do with ones and nines, wasn't it? So let's check that. I've got, let's go to colors. I've got yellow and black and light red and dark red. This is working. Oh, it is working. To both flavors of orange, both flavors of red, yellow, black, 
and that's going to be purple. So the digits that I've, or the colours that I've not seen on a one clue are, are what? There should be, there should be green. Green is one of them. Green and red, no, it's not green and red. I've got both reds. Yellow, why is my phone going? That's fine. Uh, blue, blue, green and blue. Right, so green and blue in this puzzle have to be one and nine, because if they weren't, we would break a one clue somewhere in the puzzle. Green and blue. So double click green, double click blue, and go one, oopsie, <laughs> need to put it back on numbers for a change. So I've got ones and nines in the grid. Oh, whoopsie. Okay, so that's trying to tell me that cell's not an eight, which is a, stra <laughs> a strange thing for us to be realizing at this juncture. Um, there might be a thermo somewhere that I can use to disambiguate these ones and nines. Where is a thermo that's going to help me? There's a thermo here. No, there's no thermos that are going to help me. Hmm. Ah, ah, that can't be nine because that would be a correct skyscraper. If that's nine, that would be a correct skyscraper clue. Because whatever I put in there, two buildings are seen. So green is one. And finally, I think I've got digits. I've got ones there. I've got nines in blue. And therefore, so these two can't add up to 10. That can't be an eight because that would correct this from a skyscraper perspective. That one couldn't be eight either, could it? Maybe it's eight. Those two can't be eight. Is there anything else that can't? Yeah, they are different colors as well. So are eight somehow restricted in the puzzle? Purple, if that was an eight, that would be a correct skyscraper clue. So that's not eight. The black is not eight because that would be a correct skyscraper clue. Oh, I bet you I can use the thermos, actually. I bet I can use the thermos. If I put an eight at the top of this thermo, because I can't put a nine beneath it, it would be correct thermo. So that's impossible. That's impossible. I've now got quite a lot. One, two, three. I've got, I've got six. Yeah, I've got six colors. Are they all different? Boom, they are all different. So bearing in mind, I've already hypothecated one and nine. So two of the colors have gone. I've got seven colors and I've got to eliminate six of them from being eight. And I've done it, I think. These are all different. So if I'm not mistaken, eight has to be red, dark red, because everything else, oh no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong for a horrible, horrible reason. I don't believe it. The reason I'm wrong is, uh, let me just highlight these cells so we've got a record of them. Uh, let's go to, I'll label them as X's. Look, that one and that one, I was assuming were different colors. That could be the same color as that. So I haven't managed to eliminate necessarily orange, dark orange from being eight. I don't believe it. So it's either dark, oh. That, that's okay, isn't it? That can't be eight. I've done it now. All right, I've done it now. I can use that one instead. So if, if, if this was eight, this two clue would be correct. So now I have managed to eliminate all the colors. I'm just gonna double check this because it's so important. I've got purple, yellow. Both flavors of orange, black, purple, yellow, black, both flavors of orange and one flavor of red. Yeah, so it must be 
So it's the other flavor of red, which is red dark, which is these cells. Can I double click on these? Uh, no, I don't know why it's highlighting those ones. But anyway, this, 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 one, two, three, and that I think are eights. Which means that can't be a two I'm seeing immediately. <laughs> Um, hang on, we need to get rid of these X's in the grid as well. Can we do that? Yes. Uh, let's get rid of those like this. That can't be a two. Are there any other? I mean, it, it could actually be twos. <laughs> it could be twos because that can't be a two. And that's a different color to that. If that's a two, that skyscraper clue is correct. Oh, it is going to be twos. Look at that. If that's a two, that's a correct X sum. Oh, that's too, that's too cute. That's too cute. Right. So that color is not two. Yellow is not two. Dark orange is not two. How many do I have to? I've got three digits, so I need to get to five. I need to find five digits that can't be two. Oh, at least look at the thermos. If that's two, this can't be one. So that's not going to work. What about these down here? If if that's two, you've got a correct thermo. If that's two, you've got a correct thermo. So I've, I think I've highlighted too many cells here. I've got I've got all six, but they might be a repeated color. Uh, yeah, I think. Well, the point is, I don't know what this color is, do I? So and if that's OK, because I've eliminated both flavors of orange anyway. So of the digits I've, of the colors I've not allocated, which one is it that I'm allowed to put? I think it's purple. I don't think, I don't think there I've highlighted a purple number and I've not filled in purple. So I think purple is two. Okay. But now, now I've used the 18, I've used the 10, I've not used the 19. These two have to not add up to 10, but there's still many, many ways they can achieve that objective. This clue is used. That clue is used. This clue is used. I've used all the clues. Ah, the diagonal. No, the diagonal is going to fill itself from, you know, the coloring we've done. The four clue. This, ah, that can't be a three. Because the, with the two out of the picture, that would correct the skyscraper sum. So that can't, oh, okay. So maybe I've got to do twos and, sorry, threes and sevens now. This digit, if that was a three, it would work. So that's got to be higher than three. And it could be seven, couldn't it? Because that would definitely break the four. So that's four, five, six, or seven, and that's three, five, three, four, five, or six. It can't be seven, or it would correct the skyscraper clue. So, so the black digit is three, four, five, six. The dark orange digits, oh, which we can't do down here. Dark orange, dark orange, which is at least those, maybe more, four, five, six, or seven. What do I do now? Okay, I can do thermo on this one, can't I? So this is a little thermo in which this must not be bigger. So this can't be seven. In fact, that can't, ah, that can't be three. If that's three, this thermo will go upwards. So actually I can do better with the black digits. They can't be three. They've got to be four, five or six. And this has to be lower than whatever this is. So this has to be three, four, five. It can't be six because then it will be higher. So yellow is three, four, five all of a sudden. And I can probably do better than that down here. Oh, oh, red, light red is on both sides of a thermo. 
if you see what I mean. It's got to be lower than that digit, but higher than that digit. So it's got to be a middly digit. Uh, oh, hang on, it's got... To, yeah, that must be right. If if this is too low, it's broken. If this is too high, it's broken, yeah. So this digit here, which is light red, which I haven't labelled, is either... It can't be 3, so it's got to be 4, 5, or 6, and it can't be 7, or this would be correct. So it's 4, 5, or 6, which is that digit, that digit, that digit, that digit, that digit, and that digit. Right. Right, okay. And I've been wondering about this for a while, but now I can tell you something very cool. And that cool thing is that, you remember right at the start, two hours ago, we talked about the fact that the Ren bands couldn't have repeated digits. Well, now that matters. It couldn't have not repeated digits, couldn't have consecutive digits. Because if, if, if yellow is five, those two cells will not be five, but they will be four or six, and there will be a consecutive pair on my on my Remban. So yellow suddenly is has got mitigated again. It's not five. And now, ah, oh, this is so clever. Now this can't be four, because if it's four, that will be three. And again, there will be consecutiveness on the Remban. So light red, light red is, which I've just seen, I've not put in down there, but light red is not able to be four. So it's got to be five or six. Now, there must be immense pressure on this digit now, although we don't know. This digit's going to be that digit, and we don't know what it is. But this digit has to be higher than this digit. So that's got to be six or seven only. Which means that digit is six. Oh, we just don't know. And this digit has to be lower than this, so that could be 3, 4, or 5. And that would still work, wouldn't it? And that digit's therefore 3, 4, or 5. So if we've got something going on... Ah, it's very close. 4? No, 4's got two positions. Right, so there's got to be something else to, to see here. Have, you, have I used this thermo to the... I think I have, looking at the options I've got left in there. They look very... They look correct, don't they? I know those digits are all the same. But the 4, 5, 6 or 7 for the for the orange high digit could still be either of those just well no easily oh the 19 the 19 these two can't oh they're not going to add up to 10 well how could they add up to 10 i suppose if, if this is six or seven there's a possibility they might so that suggests that, that this clue is not quite yet doesn't it which means i must be able to do something else is it not this one, is it? This one mustn't have consecutiveness on it, I suppose. Nine, it's five different digits. Why could nine, eight, seven, six, five is the only thing that I've got to watch out for here? Oh, that's right. Okay, well, that is important, actually. Look at this box, then. I've got to make sure that sequence of digits is not 98765. So these two digits must not be a 3 and a 4, because if they are a 3 and a 4, that's a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple, and they are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Good grief. So that means that one's not 4, I think. So the black digits are not 4, otherwise I have consecutiveness. Whoa, not 4. So now I've got 5, I've now got 5, 6 pair in... Um, in two of the colours. So that's quite interesting because that means I can get rid of five and six wherever that appears in other colours. So that I've got five and six as a pair in 
light red and black. <laughs> so that means that digit cannot be five or six, which means that digit cannot be five or six. Oh, does that mean that has to be seven? That's an orange digit. Yes, that's got to be seven. So there is an orange digit that is seven now. But I don't know which one it is. That digit cannot be five or six. That digit is light red. Oh, that can't be four. I don't know why I've still got four as an option in there. That's that's already been mitigated against. That's got to be a four or a seven. That's got to be a four or a seven. Oh, I thought that was going to do it then. But it doesn't. I was wondering whether if that was 4, it would force this to be 7 and force this to be 19, but it doesn't. 4 and 7 add up to 20. So this clue seems to be mitigating against this being a 3 and this being a 7. Which would imply... So one of these is 4. Either yellow is 4 or dark orange is four. So one of those is a four. Um, because otherwise this would be a three, seven pair. So if one of those is a four and I've got a five, six pair, that's four, five and six. So this is a three or a seven, I think, is what that's telling us. Let me just think about that. Five, six pair. There's a four here. So this is a three or a seven. And that is light, light grey now. It's the, I think that's the first time I've managed to pencil mark light grey. Let me double check. I've got all of them. Ah. Ah. Okay, well, that's huge. If that's true, I'm just going to pause there. I'm not going to fill, I'm not going to fill that one in. Um, but I've just worked out from this box that light grey is three or seven. Oh no, that doesn't. I don't know which way around it goes. Oh no, it's I'm um, talking nonsense. Ignore me. I still don't know which way around these go. That could still be light grey, and that could be light grey because it could be a three. I don't believe it. I just. Every time I think I've made progress here, that's not five or six. Either this one or this one is a four, which means either this one or this one has a four in it. And that's fine because that's still got the option to be the other digit. Oh, what if that's a four? Then the skyscraper clue is working. That's it. There we go. If this is a four, because this has to be five or six, the skyscraper's wrong. Or the skyscraper's right, and that's bad. So that one is seven, which is the dark grey. So dark grey with orange is seven, which is that one, that one, that one. Uh, I may have missed one. Let me see. Six, seven. No, I haven't. Right, and now light grey, light orange has to be three and this, this is going to finish it this is going to finish it I think light orange is three so that so now the finally this finally disambiguates the order down here light orange is that one that's dark orange this is now dark orange and that is light orange and that's a three and of course, the thing that matters now is that this has become a four, which means I can maybe using color, I can fourify all of these. I've still got the five, six pair. I need to make sure there's some reason that this fives and sixes get disambiguated now. What's that reason? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Um, that can be either. 
<laughs> what have I not used? I don't know. Oh no! <laughs> no, no, no! These two digits are the same. That's fine. I don't know. This 19 clue is Roggen. That's a good thing. This um, Thermo clue is unaffected by whether this is 5 or 6. No, don't fail now, Simon. Oh, that would be dis that would just be so upsetting. Have I made a mistake is now what I'm wondering. It's more likely I've not spotted a clue. Um, that is much more likely. What is it that I've missed here? It's going to be... I don't know. Maybe... Oh, I know what it is. Good grief, this is so clever, even at the end. If this is a five, this Remban up here is consecutive. So this one, well, this one here has to be six. Oh, at least, at least I hadn't, at least there was a reason. And therefore the black digits have to be five. And now this Remban is not consecutive. What a puzzle. Well, it's taken me a little bit over 45 minutes, but I think it's correct. Oh, no, it's not correct. Has it highlighted the diagonal there? <laughs> That's very clever, if so. So Sven's software has picked up that this is a diagonal which would normally have to contain different digits, and it's trying to test it for that. That might mean the rest of it is a Sudoku, i.e. a correctly solved, you know, nine in each row, column and box. I don't know, let's click tick again. Is anything else showing up in this funny red colour? Maybe, I know what I could do. I know what I could do to, to test this. If I actually get rid of all the colour in the grid, like that, which is a bit of a serious thing to do, and now click tick, it still says it's only highlighting this diagonal. So I think this might be right. It certainly felt right, and it felt logical right to the end. It's just taken an inordinate amount of time. What a brilliant puzzle. I mean, that is a serious test of my glasses. I hope you'll agree with that. And I'm quite sure I've missed something very fundamental at the point that I got really badly stuck in the middle. Um, I don't know what the quick way was of resolving where all of those oranges and reds went. <laughs> But there must have been a better way than the way I found. Um, but I think I have managed to solve it logically. And for that, I feel like I deserve a small gin and tonic, even though it's 2.45 in the afternoon. Let me know in the comments how, how you got on with that. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And especially when I've spent over two hours on the puzzle. <laughs> and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.